And then he Arduino. lost Valley, so there's Mage left. That's it. Arduino only has one deck left. You're right. And yeah, yes. as, as I was saying, like, what, what kind of mage is it going to be? And my suspicion is that it's going to be Mech Mage because... Really? From RDU? Yeah, because Tice, his teammate, also runs Mech Mage. But we're going into the game, so we'll find out very soon. Yeah, I, I just expected RDU to love his Freeze Mage. I thought he was a really good Freeze Mage player. Oh, well, you would be correct. It is Freeze Mage. <laughs> yeah, I'm not too uh, surprised by that. Coming from him, it's one of the decks uh, I think he plays the best. Oh, this is going to be interesting. As yeah. I was saying before, like typically this matchup is favored for the mage player, but I think because RDU or Gara runs anti Keelbot and Alexstrasza, um, that could be that could push it slightly towards the the shaman player. The anti Keelbot is actually a really good good point because I mean a lot of shamans have been trying to come back and you know be a little original with their deck building to make sure they could win in a meta game that's riddled. Uh, with heavy control decks that aren't handlock, so Earthshock is a little less valuable. And in that regard, I feel like anti Hillbot helping them against Freeze Mage, because Freeze Mage has come back to counter a lot of the stuff. So if they put anti Hillbot, it's pretty much mandatory to run it, or some kind of massive healing to make sure you don't get Alex Strauss out and die. Yeah, I think the problem is that even though he, even though the Shaman runs Alex Strauss, I haven't seen any burst from the Shaman, which is really important against uh, against Freeze Mage. Like before, Shaman was some types of Shaman were really favored against Freeze Mage because they ran something like Double Doom Hammer, and Double yeah. Doom Hammer. There's like just no way for Mage to block what 16 points of damage coming from the Doom Hammer. Yeah, it's an insane amount, definitely. Um, and there's also no Earth Shock right now, and I, I don't know if he's played one last game. I don't remember seeing one while I was not completely disconnected. So that could be the case that he cut them for something more, um, you know, mech heavy, so to speak, which would mean that there's no exact Doomsayer counter in case the, the board gets wiped. Mm -hmm. It's pretty tough in that position. You know, I also haven't seen Earth Shocks from uh, from the Shaman deck. Oh. Well, that's what I, that's what I was saying. Yeah, and there it is. It's he yeah. actually top decks one as we say that he doesn't run them. There we go. Game proven wrong. All right, oh, he's so he's just going to ignore the. Just try to go face as much as possible to get this mage down. Very interesting place. Mhm. Mm How's Ezra just called Malagos against Freeze Mage? <laughs> I would uh, think that's pretty good, I mean... Yeah, the, the massive burst in one turn, and then you guaranteed to pop the block, you do, you don't even trigger ice barriers. Oh, what's this? Oh, just Mad a mad scientist. scientist. Doomsayer turn. No Doomsayer? No. no Doomsayer. I think that's fine. So, do you Earthshock this, or do you keep the Earthshock for the Doomsayer? I'm guessing keeping it for Doomsayer must feel pretty tempting. But by killing it, the Mad Scientist with Earthshock, you're forcing him to have in his hand the response to your board. Or the the, uh, the ice block that he wants. Mm. Okay, so he's just going to put more pressure on the board, I think, with the Fire Elemental. Yeah, and that's I, overextending I... into Blizzard Flamestrike and... Well, then again, he's not too worried about the uh, Doomsayer, I guess. Mm. Things I feel like putting Harrison Jones and Fire Elemental on the same board is... Mm. Like, super risky. Because after that, what's left for pressure if he wipes this? Oh, yeah, definitely. In, in future turns, he's definitely hoping that he'll pull a healing totem sometime. Yep. And not only does he have to be scared of Blizzard, but there's always this uh, very unassuming explosive sheep. <laughs> oh, well, you know what? Against Shaman, this is arguably probably his one of his best plays right now. Like it's it's an awkwardly good play, but Blizzarding is going to be probably the the first step, mm -hmm. I'm assuming. Or yeah, a Blizzard looks pretty good right now. I mean, if if he goes for the explosive sheep, okay. What's this? So is he trying to bait an Earth Shock on the explosive sheep so the Doomsayer can come out after with Blizzard on turn eight because it'll be exactly on curve and Shaman has to have the hex or second Earth Shock? Yeah, that's a very heads-up play, thinking uh, pretty far ahead into the next turn. Yeah, I think that's pretty much what, he, what he's trying to do. He gets the Earthshock out of the way for the Doomsayer. All right, look, look at, at look the at amount that. of damage. This is... Oh. Did, you see, uh, did you see RDU nodding his head? He's like, yeah, I did yeah, that. I forced yeah. it out. You saw me, man. I planned this. But this is a lot of damage. And... Uh, 
Wow, RDU. <laughs> The, the funny thing is that, oh wow, you have Thalnos Blizzard right now. That's for another option. I think that's even better. That's even better. That's actually even better because it guarantees that even if he does uh, wipe the board in a way, you're at least going to get another card draw. Yep. And Doomsayer is much safer because you can't just, you know, hex it and yeah. negate the uh, the play. And we know from our perspective that, uh, that Gar can actually clear the Doomsayer with his weapon, mm -hmm. uh, with, with his Rock Rider and the Lightning Storm. I mean, it's a lot of resources, but... Yeah, but why not play Blood Mage here? Is there a reason? Is there the argument? Is it that Alex Straza and then you need Blood Mage for some kind of Fireball, Frostbolt, Ice Lance combination? A one-two punch uh, with Blood Mage? Yeah, I think that's possible. If RDU doesn't play Blood Mage right now, that's probably his line of thinking. Mm hmm. Well, he's got to be counting his cards at this point. Mm -hmm. What's making you smile? I see you smile on the camera. Nobody else does, but. Oh man, Doomsayer. Yeah, that's gonna get wrecked. Oh, oh man, that that is so unfortunate. Then again, another AOE top deck would solve the problem, right? Mm -hmm. So, do you play Anoyotron and attack the Doomsayer? I mean, uh, hex the Doomsayer and attack the Doomsayer. Or do you attack face and leave the hex up and storm it later? I think you can hex it, but you don't necessarily need to attack kill a frog. It to it. Yeah, yeah, it's it seems a bit wasteful to to use a, a three damage weapon to a, kill a, a one health frog basically. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I don't think I don't think you necessarily need the, to buff an oil tron right now because it has a divine shield and it'll probably live through one AOE. Well, it'll get pinged before a flame strike if anything. That's true. But he'll probably ping the sludge belcher instead, right? I like this play. And then hold, and then and then he is hoping that he finds an AOE, and if he doesn't, okay. So do you put your opponent on 15 health right now? I mean, your choices are fairly limited, right? Like if you top deck the other ice block, you could still win. I think putting your opponent at 15 health right now is the winning play. Yeah. Anything mm -hmm. else is just trying to stall for mm -hmm. for no reason, really. It doesn't look that great right now for the for the mage player, but at least this gives him a few outs. Mm -hmm. And if he does find Ice Block uh, off the top, he could even Blood Mage, ping Blood Mage, and just try to find the Ice Block that way. There's so many ways for him to do that. Uh, and then if he does get a second Ice Block, then Fireball, I mean, then Pyroblast will finish the game. As long as he gets an Ice Block up next turn somehow, yeah. and maybe he uses like Fireball, put his opponent down to 9 HP, then Pyroblast wins the game. Exactly. So basically, if he top decks uh, Ice Block next turn, and his opponent doesn't top deck Healbot or Alexstrasza, then he wins. Yeah, that was the winning play for sure. Mm. He he's just waiting for the top deck to hit. RDU just waiting, sitting with his hands back behind his head. He's like, "All right, this game is not in my hands anymore." Wait, and no, no, that is I not. I don't it. think so. No, that's not it. That's only 11 damage with uh, Blood Mage Thalnos. So he, he has missing. to play Blood Mage and ping Blood Mage and... And yeah, uh, he... he has to hope. Okay, I have, and I have an idea. Blood Mage, Ice Lance, Ice Lance face to 10. You ping Blood Mage, you pray for Ice Block. And that okay. is... That leaves you with 3 mana. And then next turn you win with Pyroblast. This is the only play that could maybe win. Yeah, unfortunately, RDU didn't get uh, Ice Block or Frostbolt. Either would have been really good. Yeah. Frostbolt would have been, been lethal. Actually. Yeah. So now he has to hope. He has to just Ice Lance, Ice Lance, and no. Oh, goodness. RDU. Nope. But he didn't find what he needed anyway, so that wouldn't have changed anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I guess the only play here is. Fireball to face or Ice Lance, Ice Lance to face? Kill it yourself. Pull I think Ice Lance, Ice Lance is a lot more stylish. Mm -hmm. Man, Garus Shaman going to take the win here against the Mage, which... Oh, he's going to go for Ice Lance, Ice Lance. So, do you think the the Blood Mage play was viable at all? I guess Blood Mage, Ice Lance, Ice Lance, that's four. 
Five six from pinging the blood mage. Then you get ice block and you win next turn from pyro. That was like a one out of however many cards he's got of winning. It is possible, definitely. But I think the yeah. turning point of this game was when Arty decided to uh, Blizzard and Doomsayer instead of Blood Mage, Thanos. Blood Mage, Blizzard. Thanos, and Blizzard, it, yep. It allowed his opponent, uh, Spore, to survive, and it allowed him to deal so much damage the next turn with that Flame Tongue play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he didn't have to commit resources to removing a Doomsayer. Mm -hmm. um, he could have gotten an extra card off of Blood Mage, which might have proved interesting at that point. Mm -hmm. Well, Gara takes it and he just shows everyone that he is indeed the best shaman. Shaman you know isn't what? a yeah. <laughs> it's incredible. Wow, we were just talking about him not having played shaman much. Yeah. I mean, shaman isn't a class that a lot of people think is good right now, but Gara is proving that it can be very viable in tournaments. Yep. So, uh, that'll do that'll do it for the series. Gara winning 3-1 against RDU, I think. Just convincing wins with a shaman all around after the druid was gone. Um, I hope to see more of that shaman in the next uh, in the next days of the tournament. Uh, in the meantime, I'd like to point out that this whole tournament is being run for the Child's Play Foundation, which is a foundation that helps you know children in hospitals who are sick get toys and games and video games for the sake of making their you know moment in the hospital a little less painful. So if you want to donate for that cause, there's a link in the description below, and uh, feel free to do so. Everything is going directly to them. Nothing is getting middlemaned. All right, um, we'll be back pretty soon with our final match of the day. And I think it's going to be the highlight of the day, actually. It's going to be world champion Firebat against one of the best North American players in the world, Dog. Yeah, go Dog. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Obviously, I'm biased. Um, it, it, I mean, both of them, I, I think, are my two favorite deck builders. Mm -hmm. And Zixo as well, but I don't see, uh, I don't want to see implosions anymore. <laughs> yeah, maybe we're a little tired of Zoo and... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe yes. one a little break. Yeah, so we'll be right back, guys. Ten minutes, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. <laughs> 